Welcome back to Nordic Arms and History. In today's video, we're talking about the Norwegian license production and the purchase of Bofors 40mm guns, also known as the L60-37. Now, not a lot is known about this, but we have a little bit of information uh, thanks to the Kongsberg Weapon Historical Association, so we'll be talking about that. We'll also be going a little bit over the history of the Norwegian AA uh, and a little bit of what we used during 1940. So let's begin. As aviation soared to new heights in the early 20th century, nations scrambled to defend against the growing threat from the skies. Norway was no exception. By the First World War's end, it became increasingly clear that ground forces alone were not enough. Aircraft were becoming faster, deadlier, and increasingly capable of strategic strikes. Norway's response began in the early interwar years. Early efforts at improvising anti-air defenses, like elevating old field guns, proved unreliable. In the 1920s, domestic development took center stage. The first real step came with the 7.5cm Luftwaffenkanon M16, designed by Captains Ramsborg and Berger and produced at Kongsberg Wappenfabrik. Testing began in 1920, and the gun is entered service a few years later. Static, accurate, and firing 6.5 kilo shells at 750 meters per second, the M16 had a vertical reach of up to 8,000 meters. It used early electric follow-up pointer systems for centered fire control, a rare feature in the 1920s. But technology moves fast. By the early 1930s, a new design was needed. The M32 was born. Lighter, more mobile, and with improved recoil systems and firing positions, this 7.5cm gun was more modern and entered service just in time. By April 1940, 12 were deployed around Oslo, and 4 protected the Raufoss ammunition plant. Norway's anti-aircraft network wasn't just about heavy guns. The Colt M29, a license-built version of the Colt MG38B export machine gun, was also widely deployed. While not effective against high-altitude bombers, it was essential for low-level defense. Mobile, fast-firing, and easily mountable on trucks, rooftops, or naval vessels. By 1940, Norway's air defenses were layered but still limited in number. While modern for the time, the M16 and M32 were few, and the Colt machine guns were no match for coordinated air assaults. Just before the war reached Norwegian shores, a new generation of anti-aircraft weapon was entering service, one would, that would redefine air defense worldwide. This would be the 40mm Bofors L60, and in Norwegian hands it would be named the Bofors L60 slash M37. In autumn of 1937, the Norwegian Ministry of Defense signed a license agreement with Bofors in Sweden. The deal allowed Kongsberg Wapenfabrik to both purchase and domestically produce the famed 40mm Bofors L60 cannon. The production was no small feat. Stortinge allocated 2.5 million Norwegian crowns to kickstart domestic manufacture, and Kongsberg constructed a brand new production hall, purchasing machines worth nearly 1 million Norwegian crowns. The setup took time, nearly two and a half years in fact. The first Norwegian built cannon was ready for test firing on the fateful day of April 9th, 1940, the day Norway was invaded. However, even before domestic production had begun, a small number of imported Bofors guns were acquired. Norsk Hydro purchased 10 cannons for factory defense, 4 at Harøya and 6 at Rukam. The L60 is a fully automatic recoil operated weapon, chambered in 40mm, and built for aerial targets. It's also proved effective against surface and ground threats. It was mounted either on a fixed base or a mobile four-wheeled twin-axle trailer. Once in firing position, the arms locked into a stable cross pattern with the wheels suspended. With a traverse of 360 degrees and an elevation range from minus 5 degrees to 90 degrees, the L60 provided formidable coverage. Controlled manually by hand cranks, the cannon crew could track and engage fast-moving aerial targets. On the platform, three seats, one for the predictor operator and two for the gunners. The gun featured a vertical sliding wedge breech block, autoloader, recoil brake and balancing springs. The barrel itself forged from oil-hardened chrome nickel steel. It had 16 right-hand rifling grooves with a progressive twist rate. The quick-release bayonet lock from the rear allowed for fast barrel changes in the field. Firing a 1 kg explosive shell at 850 meters per second, the L60 had a vertical range of up to 8,000 meters and a flat trajectory of out to 3 kilometers. 
With a fire rate of 120 rounds per minute, the autoloader was fed from above using four round clips. The cannon could be fired by either the predictor operator or the elevation gunner using foot pedals. Ammunition consisted of high explosive rounds with simple contact fuses. Each round included tracer compounds but lacked the safety and self-destruct features of modern shells. Unlike modern point-to-shoot systems, pre-war Bofors guns lacked integral sights. Fire control relied on coordinated teamwork. Using a mechanical predictor, rangefinders, and course speed measurers placed away from the guns. The predictor, or quick turn, was a mechanical computer. Operators input target speed, direction, and distance, and the predictor would calculate a necessary lead. These values were transmitted mechanically to two reflector sites, illuminated by electric lamps and provided onto angled glass plates, allowing the gunner to track and engage targets effectively. Each L60 crew consisted of a commander and seven men. A predictor operator coordinated fire and triggered the gun. Two gunners tracked elevation and direction. A range operator inputs distances from the rangefinder. A loader that kept the clips flowing and two ammunition runners that supplied the loader. The Bofors L60 M37 was a leap forward for the Norwegian anti-aircraft systems, a result of internal cooperation, engineering excellence, and national urgency. Though only a handful were operational by the time Norway was invaded in 1940, the groundwork had been laid for a modern and effective air defense. Kongsberg's production marked a milestone in Norway's industrial capabilities, a homegrown effort to stand ready in uncertain times. These guns, whether mounted at factory gates or hauled across rugged terrain, were more than metal and mechanics. They were a statement that even a small nation could rise and meet a growing threat. In the years that followed, the 40mm Bofors would serve across the world, on land, at sea, and in the air, becoming a symbol of reliable, rugged anti-aircraft firepower. And in Norway, the M37 remains as a testament to the engineers, soldiers, and decision makers who saw that what was coming and tried to prepare. Today, few of these guns remain displayed in museums, preserved as artifacts, reminders of a turbulent time when every second counted. Every shot aimed to defend not just the skies, but the nation's future. Alright everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions regarding the Norwegian Bofors or really any Norwegian armament, feel free to comment them down below. I love talking about it. Also, if you have any stories that you want to share, again, feel free to either email me them or feel free to comment them down below. Also, if you feel like this video deserves it, leave it a like as usual. And as always, if you want to learn more about Nordic arms and history, consider subscribing. Until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.